then Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Oh, he's so good. So forgiving. Got so much of that love. Mm. That love is the fire. That love is the fire. The apostles. I don't remember which two apostles it was that was walking down the road after Jesus rose from the dead and they weren't they didn't even recognize him. And he talked to him for a little bit on down the road to Emmaus, you know. And uh, then he opened their eyes and they recognized him. And then later they were talking about it. They were talking about the walk. You ever talk about your walk? They were talking about their walk with Jesus. And uh, they said, did not our hearts burn within us as we walked with him in the way? Hallelujah. Is your heart burning within you for walking with Jesus? Is your heart burning within you? Oh. Are you as in love with him today as you were before all that stuff happened? Sometimes the stuff just it gets in the way. It muddies the water, doesn't it? Yeah. We don't feel that. We don't feel that love. We don't feel that passion that we once felt. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But I want you to know God will restore what the enemy has stolen. Amen. He's a restorer. He's a restorer. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. yes, he does. And everything the enemy comes to do, God comes to reverse it. Yes. Amen. 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 So if the devil stole from you, God's going to return to you what the devil stole. Mm -hmm. If he's brought death to something in your life, well, then God's going to just bring life to that. If the enemy has destroyed something, God's going to rebuild it. He's a rebuilder. He's a restorer. He's a restorer. And uh, when everything is all torn down, uh, torn around, or uh, down around you, you know, when your house is nothing but a rubble and a bunch of, well, you think you think, how can God ever restore that? Well, He can. Amen. That ain't nothing to God. Not one little bit. That's not nothing to God. Well, my kids are all going crazy. But that ain't nothing to God. Amen. His kids all went crazy too. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Bless the Lord. Some of you bless your hearts. Let me tell you parents something. Parents, when your kids go all nuts on you, mm -hmm. do all kind of weird stuff, you know. <laughs> How many of us know what we're, I'm talking about? I'm telling you right now. <laughs> When your kids freak out, don't don't freak out. Don't freak out. And and so many parents, I'm I'm just I, I didn't raise my kids right. You probably didn't. You probably just did the best you could. And best you could is is just the best we can do. Well, I'm sure. Don't get over it. People say, well, it's all my fault because if I brought my children up the way that, that I should have, they all they just be living right. Not that ain't true. You think it's true? It sounds true. Sounds good. Got a question for you. This is a test question. Are you ready for the test question? Yeah. Who's the best parent there ever was? Yeah. God is the best parent that ever was. Yeah. Is he not? Yeah. Think he raised his kids right? What did his kids do? They rebelled. He said, don't you be eating that fruit. <laughs> hey, he said, don't eat the fruit. But it looks good. Oh, if it looks good, it must be good. Right? What can go wrong? It looks good. And, and the serpent told us, you know, God's just trying to 
take something away from us. He, he, you know. Hello, keep the good stuff for himself. The greatest parent that there ever was, their kids, his kids, did what they wanted to do. God was the, the father of the of the Israelite people. What did they do? They rebelled, they rebelled to the wilderness even. Even after he brought them through the Red Sea, brought them to the other side. Drowned the Egyptians in the Red Sea. Well then, they got over there and they got grumbling and complaining and griping and moaning and groaning. Thank you, Lord. Did you see that? Did you see that Holy Spirit call my lip right there? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you parents, just don't be so hard on yourself. God's going to restore your kids. God's going to restore your kids. He's going to restore the things that Satan has stolen out of your life. He is. Amen. The Holy Ghost is saying this because I didn't have to, I didn't think about any of this. I'm just telling you what's coming up out of my spirit. When I get up here, I just turn it over to the Holy Ghost. Amen. But some of you need to hear this. Don't get off over into doubt and unbelief about your kids and then second guessing how you raise them and then and and then getting under condemnation. That's the devil. If you did something, something wrong with your kids, go to them and say, I'm sorry I did this, and then let it go. It's on their shoulder now. Amen. Let it go. Now, don't be too prideful to go to your kids and tell them you did something wrong. Amen. You be humble enough to tell your kids, I shouldn't have done that. Forgive me. Amen. And then afterwards, you let it go and let the Holy Ghost deal with them. You have done your part. Bless the Lord. I come in and get off of thing like that. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Rabbit trail before the, the regular trail. Amen. I'm trying to find the regular trail. <laughs> I'm trying to find, sometimes I'm rambling in the spirit just so I can find the trail. I'm trying to find the scent. <laughs> trying to find the scent. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. Help me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's look. Let's look at Malachi for just a minute. Somebody take notes so I'll know what I preach later. Malachi, it's the last book of the Old Testament. This is going to have to come out of my spirit because I don't even have any, any scriptures. So just follow me and see what we can come up with. <clears throat> I think the most important thing on planet Earth to people is their kids. Amen. Their, their, their family. Their, their children their parents, and, and their spouses, their family. And you know, God made, a plan, uh, made us a family. And, and uh, I guess the things that gets us into most trouble is our family. Uh, I get more mad at my family than anybody. I, I'm more likely to lose my temper with my family than anybody. I'm more likely to get hurt by my family than I am anybody. And then I'm more likely to worry about my family than anybody. I mean, the devil has put the thoughts in my mind to worry. I mean, worry about the, well, what if this happens? Well, what if, what if that happens? Well, what if that, what, what if one of them falls? What if one of them has a wreck? What if this, Daniel Brittany went down, you know, and left the bed, and that baby stayed with us for, for five days. Which was a total blast, you know. But while they were going there, I thought, oh, Lord, 
What if they have a car accident? What if they die? What if they were dying? I have to raise this baby. And I love the baby and I want to raise, I mean, I should raise that baby, but oh my God, what if they die? Oh Lord Jesus, please, please bring them home safe. I was worried. I, I didn't give into it and just meditate on it, but I worried about it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I mean, you just worry sometimes. The devil, the devil throws that stuff at us. Our family is the most important thing to us. But since our family is the most important thing to us, we need to give our family to the Lord. Are you listening? We need to give our family to the Lord. And we need to pray for our family. And you know, you need to, some of you need to forgive your family members. I know they've been a horse's but I know that. But so have you. Amen. We've all done it. Amen. And there's a lot of reasons that people do a lot of things that they do. And we just got to love them and forgive them anyway. <laughs> Somebody gave me a good cousin this week. I mean, it's a good cousin. That's all I'll say about it. I mean, a good cousin. And, but you know what? I, I, didn't, I wasn't upset. I just wasn't upset. I felt like, you know, this person needs a healing. They need love and healing. So I said, Lord, just pour all kind of love out on this person. Just pour all kind of love on them. They need extra love. Amen. And uh, the best way to defeat hatred. Some of you need to listen to me. The best way to defeat, excuse me, did I look right at you? <laughs> the best way for you to defeat hatred is with love. Amen. Jesus said, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. How do you defeat hatred? Love. The world hated God. Did you hear me? The world hated God. And the world still does hate. And what did God do about that hatred? He sent Jesus. For God so loved the world Amen. that he came. Well, is somebody taking something from you? Am I stole anything from you this week? Give it to them. Well, they stole that from me. They can't steal it from you if you give it to them. Jesus said if somebody asks you for the, their, their, uh, their cloak, their shirt, give them the coat also. Amen. 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 What is that? <laughs> love. See, we're not used to love. We're not used to, our culture's not really used to love. Our culture's used to, you slap me, I'll slap you right back. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. You slap me and I'll just knock off. How dare you? I'm somebody. Well, you know what? That's right. 70 times 7. That's right. Lord, you let me tell you a story. I, oh Lord, I'm going to get to the scripture now. I'm giving you scriptural principles here. Now, but when I was a teenager, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1975. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I got saved when I was 12, 1972. When I got saved, I meant business. Amen. Not like people today who get saved and then flip around and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. I got saved and I meant it. And I was committed. I got saved up in the church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every night of revival. Whatever we had, I was there. I started tithing when I was 12. If I mowed a lawn for $10, I gave a dollar to the church. To Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I meant business. People today don't seem to mean business sometimes. Well, I was working at the Rosary Family Restaurant. 
if you are at the end of Broadway, headed towards, you go towards Kings Highway, there's a huddle house there. You know where the huddle house is? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a townhouse motel in there. It's all in, along that hillside. Well, out in the middle of that, can y'all see that in your mind? Out in the middle of that was a restaurant. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's gone. They tore it down. Mm -hmm. It was called the Bros Room. Mm -hmm. Well, it was my first job, other than Schnook's Bakery for a little while that I worked. So I worked, I went in there, and I was a dishwasher. And uh, he kept me as a dishwasher for two days. Then he moved me up to salad cook. I did all the prep work and all that. Then he moved me up to a line cook on the morning, and I come in at four in the morning and bake pies. I made the best banana split pie in your ring. And uh, uh, peanut butter and peanut butter chocolate pie. I mean, good, really good pies. I want you to test theory. Well, to test, he wants that theory tested. But I, and I got up and I baked homemade biscuits and uh, homemade gravy at four o'clock in the morning. And I was 17 years old, eight, going on 18, and went to become 18 years old during that time. And I worked 50 hours a week as a teenager. I didn't have to. My dad was a railroader. He had good money. But I wanted to work and make my own way. Amen. So I did. And uh, while I was there, there was a manager there. His name was Bob Shantos, married to Judy. They're both gone now. But Bob... Got real mad at me one day. He was he was went to the same church that I did, and then he backslid. And when he backslid, he just he did a walker of job. <laughs> Turned away from the Lord. And one day, I said, Bob, I need some help up here. I was on the line by myself, and we had a big breakfast rush come in, and it just overwhelmed me. And some people were wanting other things. I was just overwhelmed, and I, I called for him, and he got so mad at me. After that rush was over, he took me back in the back room, and he cussed me, and he spit on me, and he told me to get out of there, and that I was fired, and just get out of here. Now, this was my brother in the Lord that had backslid. My brother in the Lord that had backslid. I'm going to watch you. I'm going to teach you now. Stay with me. I'll teach you something if you'll learn. The Holy Spirit on the inside of me stabilized me. I'm 18 years old. Do you understand how, how young that is? I'm 18 years old, and a 400-pound man that was a bouncer in a bar cussed me and spit at me and told me I was fired. I went and stood by, by the back of the door and prayed in tongues. I saw a short praying in that real quiet. You know, under my breath, everybody was hearing me. Just me and the Holy Spirit talking. Praying. And uh, I said, uh, are you calm down now? <laughs> yeah, you want me to go back on the line now? I did. Came back in the next day. He told me I was hard, but I just didn't accept it. <laughs> I came back in the next morning. I had prayed for him. I went home and I prayed for that man and I fasted that evening meal and I prayed for him. Lord, I got, I started crying. I said, Lord, he's so backslid. Look how backslid he is the way he talked to me, Lord. Lord, he must really be wounded. Something must really be wrong in there. Oh, God, bring him back to you. See, most of you say, I'm not the holy crap out of him. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, see, that's the that's the natural, carnal thing to do, right? Yeah. Just knock them right in the head. Amen. That's the natural, fleshy man of you. Well, if you want to be a natural, fleshy man, there's plenty of them out there. Just ruin the rest of the world. Amen. Amen. Come on. But I'm trying to teach you a higher way. Yeah. So when in the next morning, and Bob Shantos. He called me into the office. And this 400 pound man who was a bouncer in a bar, had been, was my manager. He got down on his knees in front of me. He said, Brother, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. 
He said, pray for me. I'm backslidden. I need to come back to the Lord. He's in heaven today. Amen. 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 Praise He's in heaven today. Because <laughs> somebody refused to give up on him. I mean, I had a bunch of church friends that had gave up on Bob. He, you know, they gave up on him, man. With good reason in the flesh. <laughs> I don't ever give up on people. Don't ever give up on people. He knelt down there. He said, pray for me. And I led him back to Jesus that morning. Amen. And he got turned back around and came back on fire for the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Why? What if I had just hit him? Then the, then the police could have got called. And because of an assault. What good that would have done? Are you listening to me? What kind of life do you want to lead? Is it harder? Yeah, it's harder. It had been easier just to hit him. Now, I wouldn't hit him with my fist because I was just a, a skinny teenager back in those days. I'd have hit him with one of them skillets. <laughs> we had some of them really good skillets. <laughs> Amen. We had some good skillets. <laughs> Whacking <laughs> in the name of the Lord. The last, you're coming down. <laughs> but no. The Holy Spirit on the inside of me wouldn't let me do that. See, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I'm in business with God. I didn't just give my God my tongue so I could speak in tongues. I gave him my heart. And I gave you my will. Amen. And if you'll do that, you'll see some things turn around in your life. Amen. You quit talking ugly to your wife. Right, you quit talking ugly to your husband. Amen. Amen. See this? This is what you're doing. See this? That's what God wants you to do. Shut your mouth. Engage your spirit. Shut your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost take over your tongue. Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Amen. If that's speaking in a heavenly language, fine. If that's just speaking in a language better than you have been, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The Baptists believe. That just it means you quit cussing and all the rest. Amen. We Pentecostals believe in speaking in tongues in heaven. Like I say, let's do it all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's do it all. But the words we speak are going to be words of love. Amen. Love is the greatest, most powerful tool. Because see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13... <laughs> I'm thinking it's about verse 8-ish. It says, love never fails. Love never fails. Amen. Guess what? If you walk in love, you'll never fail. <laughs> and every time you walk outside of love, you're failing. Did you hear me? Every time you walk outside of love, you're failing. Amen. Will God forgive you for failing? Amen. You bet he does. Because you know why? Because he's love. And if he's asking you to forgive other people, 70 times 7, come on. If he wants you to forgive somebody, what did Peter say in, in, in Matthew chapter 18? Peter went to Jesus. He said, Jesus. He said, how many times is my brother going to sin against me and I forgive him? And then what did Jesus say? What did he say? How many times? Seventy times seven, he said. Forgive me. One of the one of the gospel writers, I don't know if it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, said seventy times seven in a day. And I thought, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. If somebody steps on my toes four hundred nine times in a day, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to forgive him four hundred nine times. How can you ask me to do that? Well, you know why? He's that's just like him. 
How many times will you mess up doing the same stupid thing you did last time and God still forgive you? More than 70 times 7. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah! Because God's not going to require you to forgive somebody and then not forgive you as a brother. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, I like God. Oh, I like Jesus. I think they're just awesome. Now, I'm, you know, you realize I'm talking to you about uh, the, the deep stuff. You think the deep stuff is the rapture and the tribulation and the antichrist and the hundred year, uh, thousand year millennial reign of Christ and, and, and the seven feasts and the, the beasts with the heads and the, of the cow and the, and the circle within a circle and all that stuff. And the, is he, you think that's the deep stuff? No. The deep stuff is when somebody hurts you, you forgive them. Yeah, the love of God, that's the deep stuff. Come on out of the deep water with me. Come on out of the deep water. Let's learn about love and this story. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you, oh, I love you. Some of you are mad at somebody for something they said to you 30 years ago, and you bring it up. You know how I know you haven't forgiven them? If you forgave them, you wouldn't be bringing it up. Amen. You know what? Your tongue is a thermometer of your spirit. Amen. What comes out of your mouth right. tells what's in your heart. Jesus said that, didn't he? He said, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right? Amen. So people will come to me. Now, I'm, I'm forgiving this person, but then they'll rattle on and on about what this person did. And I'll say, well, if you forgave them, you wouldn't be remembering and praying with that. Amen. Amen. Did God say, as far as the east is from the west, I'll remove your sins and remember them no more? Amen. Huh? Amen. Does God have a bad memory? He chooses to let it go. He, on purpose, has a bad memory when it comes to our sins. Amen. Your sins will I remember no more. Did you know that it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that love believes the best of every person? Amen. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you another story. Some of, have some of you bear with me that heard these stories. I'm sorry. we got new people, and I, I'll... Uh, tell some of these old stories, but I, I worked at uh, I worked at Red Lobster in Tulsa on 51st and Yale while I was going to Bible college. And so one day I was uh, it was lunch and uh, we, were, we were ready to go. I got a uh, They said we got you table six and I went in back in this back room and there was Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth and Gloria, and then there was Jerry Savelle and uh, his wife, and another couple. And they didn't have a big lunch or anything, they had nothing extravagant or anything like that. And I'd always like Kenneth Copeland because I've been listening to him for years and studying his materials and listening to the teaching tapes. And I've listened to Kenneth and Kenneth Hagen and Kenneth Copeland and some of those Bible teachers and stuff. When I was working up here at the Durian in 1980, 79, 80, and uh, I worked the midnight shift. And so my manager, I said, Is it would it be okay with you if I listen to teaching tapes while I'm doing the night audit? He said, Do whatever you want as long as you get the night audit done. I don't care what you do. So I'll be listening to teaching tapes for four, five, six hours a night. I mean, I just got the word in me. I like the word. <laughs> And I got full of the word. Hallelujah. So Kenneth and Gloria, they were all in. And I went and waited on them. And then they left. They were friendly enough, you know. They were talking. And nothing special, but I, I thought, surely to gosh, they'd give me a piece of cash. Well, they didn't. Kenneth Copeland gave me a dollar ten. And I was. I was hacked. 
I thought, here's this big time preacher guy coming into Red Lobster and a little peon Bible school student, and he gives me a dollar. If I had a gun, I'd shoot him. <laughs> I was mad. I went home. Started complaining to Nancy. I got there in time to go to prayer school in the afternoon and Kenneth Copeland was teaching at prayer school that afternoon. And she said, are we going to go hear Kenneth Copeland? I said, no. I'm not going to go hear Kenneth Copeland. She said, well, what's wrong with you? I'm not, I told her. And he, didn't even leave, he left me a dollar. I was not a happy camper. She said, well, honey, maybe he didn't know what he, maybe he didn't realize what he did. She started making all these excuses for Kenneth. And I said, I, no, that ain't, no. She said, what does the word say? I said, well, I don't know. It says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what does the word say in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 13, 14, 14? What's it say about love? Love believes the best of every person. said, you ain't believing the best of Kenneth Copeland. <sighs> I guess you're right. I guess I'm not. Lord, forgive me. I repented. I didn't want to repent, but my wife made me. <laughs> so I, no, she didn't. But you know what I'm saying. She gave me the truth. I didn't like it because my flesh, you know, your flesh. See what I'm talking about? I was talking about your flesh earlier. Your flesh wants to do all this reaction, 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 drama, drama, drama. That's the devil. Yes. Tell your flesh to shut up. Go sit somewhere and be quiet and pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 When you have going to have a big reaction, Amen. some of you wives and husbands, shut up and go pray somewhere. Amen. Amen. But it's just the flesh that was. So well, anyway, so I said, all right, Lord, I forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm going to go to Ken Copeland's meeting. Not only that, but I am going to take a special offering. And I didn't have much money as Bob school said, but I took a $20 bill, put it in, I gave a special. I said, this is what I wished he had given me, was a $20 tip. And, and he could have afforded it real easy, but he didn't. So I'm going to give this in my offering. So I gave him the offering. And then I sent him a note. He, he emailed me back a note. But well, the, it, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the next day, I go to Red Lobster. Went to the meeting. The meeting was fine. Went particularly good. Went particularly bad. This was a good meeting. Next day, went to, to Red Lobster. Kenneth and Gloria came in by themselves. They said, they called the hostess. I said, we want Ken to wait on us. So, I went right down the road. Kenneth said, he said, Ken, he said, uh, uh, we were in here yesterday. He said, did we leave you a tip? I said, yes, sir, Mr. Colton, you left me a dollar. He said, oh, my goodness. He said, I got to thinking about that. He said, I thought about that all night long. He said, I thought, i got to get down there and give that boy a tip. I think we, we didn't need you, but I think we stiffed that boy. And, and Kenneth and Gloria couldn't rest over it. <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't rest. You couldn't eat. I was resting fine right after I forgave him that day. The day before, well... That, that day, he left me a $20 tip and apologized to me. And before I, I was rolling my silverware, and before I left that day, come a call at the cash stand. Ken Strong, there's a call for you at the cash stand from Fort Worth, Texas. I said, okay. So I went in there, took the phone, uh, Ken, are you the waiter? The waiter on Kenneth Copeland? I said, yes, sir. He said, this is Jerry Spell. Jerry Spell is a very famous evangelist. Big time evangelist. He said, we, I, just wanted, I just called down here from Fort Worth. He said, I want to make sure you got your tip. Did you get a tip? Uh, I said, oh, oh, brother. said, oh, yes, thank you so much. Kenneth came by and took care of that today. I really appreciate you calling. Thank you so much. I'd have missed my blessing if it wasn't for my wife. Amen. 
She zeroed me back into the Word. Love believes the best of every person. Amen. 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 You know what I'm convinced of? If I had stayed in bitterness, and if I had not went to that meeting, and if I had not given that offering, and if I had hardened my heart, God would have hardened Kenneth Copeland's heart, and he had never called me. Amen. Amen. Jerry Savelle would have never called me from Fort Worth, Texas. God would have just blocked it right out of their mind because of my hardness of heart. Amen. You're losing a blessing every time you don't bless somebody, and every time you think bad of somebody, and every time you get out of the love of God. Amen. You're losing a blessing. Amen. Years later, I ended up working for Kenneth Copeland for three years in Fort Worth, Texas, and I've never known an employer to treat their employees better than Kenneth Copeland does. Amen. He's just a man like any other evangelist, but he knows how to treat his people. He treated us good, gave us insurance, paid us a good wage, treated us great. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One day I snuck into the computer system where I was supposed to be. <laughs> working at Kenneth Copeland's because I worked on the computers. That man gives. Never seen so much given. Tens of thousands of dollars of materials to send to people in prison. Amen. Amen. Tens of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to the poor Amen. and to other ministries. He could he didn't have to give all that away. He could keep it and just get in a bigger house or car. But he practices what he preaches. Amen. Now I didn't think he did that day at Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But thanks be to my to my precious wife who taught me to believe in the word. And taught me that, that love is a higher aim. Amen? Amen? I want to tell you something. You get in love and you stay in love and you walk in love. Malachi chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 5 says, I'm talking about family. Loving your family, forgiving your family. How come I'm talking about this? Well, several of you need it. Amen. 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 And the ones that you don't need it today will probably need it tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Tomorrow's a fresh day for somebody to step on your toe. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If they haven't stepped on them lately, they will tomorrow. That's okay. <coughs> Behold, I will send you a line to the prophet before the coming of the great dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the hearts of the father say hearts. hearts he shall turn the hearts of the father to the children and the hearts of the children to the father that's a promise and I claim that for my boys and I claim that for my grandchildren <laughs> anybody else that I'm in relationship with that God turns their heart to me and my heart to them Amen. Amen. What's that? That's all about love, isn't it? Because love never fails. It says whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall come to an end. We get to heaven, we're going to be speaking in tongues. Amen. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But love endures Forever. Amen. It's the most powerful thing on planet Earth. Glory be to God, the love of God. What a Savior we have. He loved you and me when we didn't deserve to be loved. Amen. He lifted us up when we deserved to be left by there. He lifted us up. What a Savior is that? And He gave us an example in closing. I'm going to have you look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Anybody get anything out of this message? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. 
Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Who wants to follow God? As dear, dear children, what are we talking about? Family relationship. Amen. Are you in the family? Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the family and cleansed by his blood. Amen. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now go to the King James Version in that verse of, uh, of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Are you with me? Ephesians 5, 1. And then, go to, and then you'll go to verse 2. Therefore be imitators. Now the Amplified says imitators, uh, but the, uh, the King James says followers of God. You look up that Greek word, for followers, that when it was written in the original Greek, it means to mimic like a baby mimics their parent. You ever had a baby mimic you? You say it enough times to it and then they say it back? Oh my gosh, yes. That's what we're supposed to do. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for that. They know not what we do. What they do. What are we supposed to do? Mimic him. Father, forgive them. Brother, amen. Most of the time, people do stuff. They don't know what they're doing. Something's chemical in their brain. Their anger. They got a hurt or a wound. Something's going on with them. Or maybe they're just mean. Amen. But usually mean people are mean because they've been hurt. Amen. So let's, let's mimic God. Let's imitate him and follow him as dear children. Next verse, verse 2. And walk in love. Say walk. Walk. What is our walk supposed to be like? <coughs> one word. Uh, let me give the one word test again and see how many of you can get it right. What's the walk that we're supposed to be walking? Walk of love. And walk in love. As Christ has also loved us Amen. and has given himself for an offering. And give yourself as an offering. I don't want to be given as an offering. Well, do you want to imitate God or not? Well, I want to imitate God as long as it's convenient. <laughs> I want to imitate God as long as it's fun. I want to imitate God as long as there's no sacrifice. I want to imitate God as long as it's easy. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's not taking up your cross and following him. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Whosoever taketh not up his cross and followed after me is not worthy to be my disciples, Jesus said. Amen. Amen. What's the greatest cross you'll ever bear? I'll tell you the greatest cross you'll ever bear is forgiving people. It is. It's a lot easier to put a tithe in the offering plate than it is to forgive somebody to hurt you. <laughs> but Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive me for they know not what to do. What did Stephen say? Stephen was being stoned to death, remember? They were stoning him, he was laid out there. <clears throat> the Bible says he looked up into heaven. See if I, can anybody quote what he said? He said, who said that? He said, Father, he said, lay not, lay not this sin to their charge. Now, on a bad day, I said, Lord, kill them. But before you kill them, make sure they're hurt real good. <laughs> on a good day, I'd say, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Amen? Amen. Why, why did he say that? Why did Stephen say those words? <clears throat> he was mimicking Jesus. He's, he heard that Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Stephen was being an 
imitator, a follower. Put that up in the Amplified. He's being an imitator. And walk in love. No, do the first verse. Go back to first verse in the Amplified. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. Copy. Imitate. Mimic. That's what it says in the Greek. We're to mimic God. What are we to be? The reflection of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. We're to reflect him. When we reflect his love, they'll know ye are Christians by your love one for the other. 